Hey guys, welcome back to part two of the outdoor shower build. If you missed part one, I'll put a link in the description below. You might want to check that out to bring you up to speed where we are today. So, today's video is going to cover the installation of the drainage for the shower system. So, as you can see here, I have a drywall kit. I have some corrugated piping. I'm going to be installing that somewhere out here in the yard and running the piping up to where the shower is going to be located. Now, before we get started, I wanted to mention that this video will be helpful to anyone that is looking to install a drywall system in the yard. Whether it be that you have bad drainage, uh, maybe you want to drain some of your rain gutters away from your house. I'm actually going to be tying this into the system as well. Uh, if you have a pool, one of these might be useful near your pool filter to aid in dispersing the backwash water. And really you can use this in any type of application where you have a problem with water drainage. So like I said today, as you know, we're going to be installing this for an outdoor shower and I'm going to show you the entire process what I'm going to be doing here today. I have a unique system planned for this area up here to drain the water once it drops below the deck because as you know I mentioned in the first video I'm going to be extending the deck out and the shower is going to be mounted up on the house here and we got to drain the water away from the surface of the deck somehow so I think I have a solution for that. We'll see how it goes. So without any further ado Let's get started. All right, guys, as is the case with all my videos, I'm gonna put links down in the description where you can purchase all the good stuff I'm using here today. So this is a drywell kit made by NDS. It's called a flow well. You can get these in Lowe's and Home Depot. And like I said, I'll put links where you can purchase them online. If that's what you uh, would like to do. So I've used these a lot in the past. These are great kits. And what I usually like to do first is take everything out of the package and assemble it because I want to get it together so I can lay it on the ground and mark out exactly what I have to dig to fit this into the ground. So, as you can see here, you just have to do some assembly. I guess they do this so they can fit it into a small box and get it to the store as cheap as possible. So, you basically have these tabs on the side of this it locks into each of the side panels through these holes and uh, it's really not all that difficult okay keep the hammer and just tap the thing together and just like that it's put together. Comes with the three sides and a lid. All right, so obviously this whole this whole thing gets buried in the ground. Alright, so the kit itself, one of them stands 32 inches tall. So we have to dig at least a 32 inch deep hole to fit this in. And obviously uh, the diameter of it also. Uh, which looks like it's like right around a little over two feet, 26 inches. That's for one of them. Like I said earlier, you could stack these things. If you need more capacity in the ground for more water storage, and you can see it has a lip on the bottom, you could stack a bunch of these together and make this deeper if you need to. But the whole idea with a dry well is not only the water capacity that you get on the inside of this thing, but it increases the surface area of the ground beneath the the lawn or your soil to allow the ground to absorb that water and disperse it. You just got to check your soil conditions. I'm going to show you a little trick when we get a little further along in this process here to improve your conditions inside the hole when you dig it. All right, this really isn't a hard thing to install guys. It's just a lot of grunt work. So let's get started with uh, digging a hole. First thing you got to do is decide a spot you want to put this thing in. Okay. All right, so I think I've decided on this area here only because there's a spot where this toy that my kids have sits in the, on the lawn here and it's all dead. So rather than destroy the grass, let's put it here. You can use a shovel like this with a flat end and cut your sod so you can lift it up, put it aside, and then if you dig your hole, you can put it all back. Uh, I'm not going to have to do that here, obviously, because, like I said, there's nothing here. It's all dirt. So what I like to do, I put a tarp down. And I throw all my dirt onto that. That way you're not ruining the lawn. 
All right, these aren't new tricks, guys. <laughs> Everyone does this. It's just, this is new to you. Maybe it'll help. So I'm going to go around the whole outside of this thing and basically just rim it out so I know exactly what I got to dig. Now I'm going to be just dropping this thing right in the ground. There's a few ways you can install these. Obviously, like I said, you can stack them. You can also dig this hole bigger than the actual drywall unit. And what you can then do is take all these knockouts on the sides of this thing here. I don't know why you can see that right now, but there is holes that are pre-stamped. You knock those out with a hammer, and then you can fill the whole outside of this thing with gravel. And what that'll do is double your capacity, or triple, depending on how big you make the hole, uh, of the water that can go into this thing. So it will fill up with water, and then it'll drain out of these holes around it into the surrounding gravel, and just give you a little bit more drainage if you need it. Again, I'm not gonna be doing that today. I don't need to. So, there we go. There's a hole that we're going to dig. Let me go get another shovel. And we'll start. Alright, so nothing special here. Just have to dig this whole area out now. Obviously, some of this dirt is going to need to be moved somewhere else. For the time being, I'm just going to throw some on the tarp because I need some to backfill around the edges. Um, but I will switch over to a wheelbarrow at some point and move the dirt to the back of the yard somewhere. So I'm going nice and easy and <laughs> wouldn't, you, wouldn't you know it, I already have a pipe here that's going to be in the way. So let's see what we got. You could expect this guys, this is going to happen. If you have a sprinkler system, you probably let's see here what we got. Obviously, like I said, you might have to jog this thing over a few inches if you hit a line in the process. It looks like so far. I only have one here, so that's good. Got I have a 12 zone sprinkler system in this. Uh, something like seven or eight zones just in the backyard here. So I was afraid there was gonna be a bunch of pipes in this one little spot, but looks like just one, so All right, let me show you. So that's what we're dealing with. Poly pipe sprinkle line, not not the end of the world. So what I'm going to do instead of having to move that thing, I'm just going to move this whole hole over like six inches this way. That way, that thing can stay there. Don't have to mess around with it. And it'll make the job a little bit easier. So, so again, I'm just going to take the drywall, kind of see on the edge of that where I got to be. And again, not rocket science here, guys. It's pretty easy easy stuff. I'm just gonna mark this area out instead right here. And we'll move our trench over a little bit. Hopefully hopefully there's no pipes over here now, but we'll see what happens. So I am gonna save some of this grass because I'm gonna need this now. Again, you have to get underneath it. And uh, usually it lifts out pretty easy. Grass roots are only a couple inches deep. So we'll save that over there on our tarp. And uh, that's it, we should be good. Let's see, Let's see what we have here. Yeah, I think we might be good there. So that's where our hole is gonna be moved to now. All right guys, after a good solid half an hour digging, you can see what we have. That's about a 30 inch deep hole, and it should fit that thing pretty well. So the reason why I went a little bit deeper than necessary is two reasons. Number one, I want to throw some pea gravel in the bottom of this thing before we drop that in there. And what that does is it improves the water to soil contact in terms of it being able to percolate down into the ground. I've always found that to be a better way of doing it rather than just leaving the, the sand or the soil, whatever you have on the bottom of that thing. Another reason why I like doing that 
If you ever have to pump this out for whatever reason, if you can drop a submersible pump down into this thing, it's nice to have that bed of pea gravel on the bottom so you're not dropping the pump right down into the mud and sucking all that mud up into your pump. Right, so I'm going to go ahead and drop this in here just temporarily to show you what I'm talking about. You can see that thing's a lot deeper than it needs to be now. But like I said, we're going to add gravel. And we can't forget about the lid. The lid, the lid adds about five, six inches to the overall depth of this thing because you can see it's tapered. So when this thing snaps into place, right, you can see now we're, we're even closer to ground level. And you really never want this thing to be up real close to ground level. And the reason for that is, if you're gonna be planting grass back over the top of this, the grass needs a place to grow. The roots gotta be able to get down into the soil. If you put this thing too close to the top, too close to ground level, I can tell you right now, this thing's been sitting out in the sun for about an hour and it's already hot to the touch. You throw a little bit of soil on this thing, it's still gonna get hot. This area of the yard is always going to be dry then. The grass isn't gonna grow. You're gonna get a dry spot where it's dead and it's just not a good situation. So you always wanna sink this thing down in the ground. Uh, right around probably five or six inches from the top of this thing and that'll eliminate that problem. So another thing I want to show you guys here on the lid, you can see there's a knockout right here in the middle of this. And what this is for, you punch this out and you can slip a piece of SDR 35 pipe, four inch sewer pipe, into this and bring that up to ground level and then install a grade on the top of it. So what that does, it also gives a spot for any surface water that can accumulate the drain down into the drywall. The other nice thing about that is it marks out the spot exactly where our hole is here for the drywall. So if we ever have to get in there to service it, it's not a guessing game of where this thing is. We'll have that grate right in the top of this at ground level. And we could pull it off to service it and take a peek in there and see if there's any issues. All right, guys, fast forward into the future about three months. We are in the midst of a tropical storm here on Long Island, as you can see. And this is Tropical Storm Prey. It's dumped about three inches of rain in the past couple hours and I wanted to show you another reason for adding the drainage grate to the top of the drywall. So as you can see, the drywall has completely filled the water. The ground can't absorb anymore after all this rainfall. I also have the shower on right now to embellish the problem. I'm not going to turn around because I don't want to give away the project and the rest of the video series at this point. But as you can see, the water is dumping out the top of the drain grate and that's exactly why we want to install that or another reason why we want to install that this is what we want we don't want that water backing up the uh, shower drain that close to the house that wouldn't be good obviously we have the rain gutter attached to it as well we don't want the water coming up there either and this is a safe spot in the yard to disperse that water so again just wanted to show you how the system works when it gets filled up it's working perfectly that's what we want I'm going to get inside now before I destroy my camera and we'll get back to the drywall install. I hope you guys are seeing this good. The sun's getting a little intense out here now. One final step I like to do before we throw some pea gravel on the bottom of this. I like to take a post hole digger and right in the center of this hole, I like to dig a little hole. And the reason I do this is this hole will also be filled with pea gravel and it aids in the drainage of the water in the bottom of this. And you're in a poor drainage area and like I said I have sand here this isn't going to be an issue for the water to drain but if you don't have this say you have a lot of clay digging that hole down even further well it does a couple things one maybe you'll get down to that sand level below the clay who knows right Number two, it gives more surface area for that water to drain into the ground, okay? This, again, a lot of things we're doing here, this can't hurt. It's not going to hurt anything. It's, it's a couple extra minutes of work. Do it now, and hopefully it eliminates a problem down the road if you have one, all right? And that's all you need. That's down about a good foot and a half. And we'll just, uh, we'll go ahead and fill that now with some pea gravel in We'll add about two or three inches of gravel on the bottom of this thing as well. All right, guys, well, that's just some pea gravel I had laying in the yard here. Threw it in the bottom of the hole. And a 
nice thing about that is it also gives a nice firm base for the drywall system to be installed on the bottom of that. It's a lot easier to level that than it is dirt. That kind of self levels itself. And that's it. You can see we filled in that hole in the middle there we dug. Got a nice layer of it now on the bottom. Let's smooth that out a little bit more. All right, guys, well, that's pretty much it. it doesn't have to look pretty. It's going to be buried in the ground. No one's ever going to see it. It just has to work. All right, so our next step, we're going to install our corrugated pipe from our drain location into this drywall. So as you can see here on the sides of this thing, there are knockouts. Those are four-inch knockouts. They accept the four-inch corrugated pipe. There is an adapter piece you can buy that locks into the side of this thing to accept that thing a little bit tighter. You don't need it. I'm going to put a link in the description. You can't find these things in Lowe's or Home Depot, unfortunately. They don't sell them. You don't need it. I'm going to show you how you can install this pipe directly into this without that piece. Okay? So, the only consideration we have here now is we have to line up. You can see these things are they're all on the inside of this. All right? You can see them on the outside here. Here's one of them. You just got to line one of those up with where your trench is going to be going over to your drain. So I'm probably going to use that one right there. And then we just got to trench out a section to lay that into that. Only consideration with this, in terms of digging the hole for the pipe, is that it needs to be pitched. This all works with gravity. There's no pumps or anything. So, in short, the drain up there has to be higher than the outlet down here. So the outlet here has to be lower than that spot there so the water can gravity drain down. Usually they tell you like a quarter inch per foot, I believe, for... Uh, drainage in your house. You don't even need that much for an outside drywall like this. If there's any little bit of slope on it, the water's naturally going to work its way down. Only thing you have to think about with this, make sure there's no obstructions in your path. You might have some pipes running through here, irrigation, electric, that type of thing. Those things can't be moved and you can't really belly this thing because it can create an area where debris can gather in the pipe and obviously we can't lift it over obstructions in the ground because water isn't going to travel uphill and down it's going to back up to the lowest spot, which more than likely will end up being the drain. So let's hope that when we excavate this, we don't hit anything major that we can't move. All right, let's get started digging the trench. All right, bring you guys up to speed here. Got the trench dug up to the drain location. Putting my kids to work, cheap labor. <laughs> Find any way you can to get this job done. So me anyway. Too, me too, Daddy. Yep. So anyway. The drain up there obviously has to be higher, like I said before, than the inlet into the drywall because this is all gravity fed. So you can see, I got a slight taper on the trench and as I mentioned earlier, there's all those sprinkle lines that I was worried about. So we got, so we have our first one here that we moved the drywall over for. Got another one here, another one right down there. There's another one right here. Watch out guys, let me sneak in. And, well, that's it. And then over here is going to be where the drain is. So, our first pipe here, I think I'm going to be able to sneak underneath this one with the drain pipe. The second one here, I think it's going to be low enough where I can go right over the top of it. I'm going to dig. I'm going to dig underneath that one on either side and see if I can just push it down a little bit. That should be good. And then the last one here, down there, I think I'll be able to sneak the pipe underneath that. And then we got our inlet right there to the drywall that we just got to punch out and stub the corrugated pipe into. So we're going to continue to dig. My son right now, he's working on the other section of trench that's leading up to the downspout that is right over there. So we're going to bring that piece of pipe down. I'm going to put a T in here, connect everything together. And it's going to look for in for a look here what we did. So this pipe, I decided I'm going to push it down and run the, the car gated over the top of it. Um, you can see what I did here, I extended the trench out on either side to expose the sprinkler pipe a little bit better, dug underneath it and into each side underneath and what that allows you to do is it gives you a lot of flex with this thing so we can now push this down on the ground, put our drainage pipe over the top of it and then we keep our pitch and everything is good, we'll backfill it and everything should be okay. We have our trench dug up to our downspout which is back around over there so that's good we're going to install this T and then that pipe basically just snaps into all the sides of that 
no glue, no, uh, no other fittings or screws needed. And then you get further up the trench here, and this is going to be our drain basin that we're going to use. So this is sold separately. You have, uh, you have this piece here that the pipe connects to. That sits down in there. You can see it, um, it basically has a little well in there that traps debris and doesn't allow it to get into the pipe. So the idea is, so every once in a while you pop the, you pop the lid off and you get down in there and clean it out. And it does a pretty decent job of keeping your, uh, your pipe and your drywall clean by trapping any dirt that falls in here. All right, this is called an atrium drain. And what that basically is, is the drain portion rises up above the ground. And what that's good for, you see this a lot of times up on roofs. And the reason why you use these is it could pack all up around the edge of this with debris all the way up to the top. And even if this whole side gets plugged up, the water can still drain in the top. So it's great for an area that is difficult to get to in terms of maintenance. Um, it allows the water to drain because if we were just to install... Uh, well, this is a little bit smaller, but let's say we just installed a flat grate in here. That thing can get plugged up really easily with debris. And uh, being that it's going to be underneath the deck like this, it's not going to be a place that I can easily service. I can obviously pull a couple deck boards up and get underneath here, but who wants to do that? So this will prolong the maintenance schedule for me of getting underneath here to clean this thing out. So I think that's going to work good. Now, obviously, we have a little more work to do here. I'm going to show you what I'm going to... We put it in place for this, but obviously we have to finish up this pipe first. Alright, so I think the best place to start this process is over here at the rain gutter. So, I removed the downspout that ran out into the yard. And you have a choice now in how you want to connect this to the drywall system. The fastest and easiest way is to get one of these adapters right here. Now again, I'll put a link in the description below for all these items, but you can pick these up in Lowe's or Home Depot. I always found Lowe's to be the preferred choice for this type of drainage stuff only because they have a better selection. So you can get one of these, basically that just slips on like that and on the bottom of this you, you connect your black corrugated pipe. This is just, this is, just this is a bell house, uh, this is an adapter to connect two pieces of pipe together. You cut this off but this basically slips onto the pipe like that inside. Now that's an okay way of doing it. It's just that I don't really like the look of this stuff above grade. It's like an unfinished look. I just don't care for it. The way I like to make these connections is with PVC. So you can get one of these adapters right here. Okay, that goes on the bottom of the downspout. And then you just take a piece of SDR pipe, four inch in between this and a 90 degree elbow. You put this down on the ground obviously like that. Connect it with a piece of pipe, and then you get one of these adapters right here, and this goes from 4 inch drainage pipe back to corrugated. And corrugated pipe slips right over this. Right, so then that sits in the ground, and all you have exposed above the ground is a piece of white PVC, and it matches a lot better with the rain gutter. And what I think gives you a much more finished look when you're done. Get a measurement here for our pipe. Looks like we need about 15, 15 and a half inches. Get us some more adapter down to our elbow. All right, so you by no means need a miter saw to cut this pipe. A hacksaw will do, but I have the saw here, so I'm going to go ahead and use it. If you are using a miter saw to cut this pipe, or any type of pipe, just make sure you have a good, firm hold of it, because the blade will want to grab this thing, and it'll start spinning it around. Last thing you want to happen, so just make sure you hold it nice and tight. There's our piece of pipe. Now I usually don't glue these connections because it simply doesn't need it. It's a tight enough fit. And just a little tip for you guys that live up north. A lot of times what will happen in the winter time is, and there's nothing you could do about this, it's just the climate we live in. The downspout gets dammed up with ice. Like I say it snows and then you have a warm day and the snow starts to melt and then freezes at night. And this whole thing gets filled with water and dammed up with ice and freezes and then what will happen a lot of times it'll crack the the downspout adapter up here and this thing will crack right off 
all right, because the ice will start coming out the top. And it's not the end of the world. You just got to replace it. But if you go ahead and glue all these parts together, you're going to have to replace all this underground, excavate it. It's just a lot easier not to glue this thing, and then you can just pop it off in the spring and replace just the coupler. It's not the end of the world. But you do what you want. I'm just giving you advice along the way here. So there's no need to, uh, to glue these up. Once you push them together, it's, it's hard to get them apart. This pipe isn't under pressure, obviously. This is just water draining out of it. All right, and uh, that's basically it. You just attach your pipe right to the bottom of that now. That's in place. This isn't going anywhere. That's nice and tight. Pretty tight quarters up in here, guys. I'll try to show you this the best I can. Right. What I might be better doing is connect. You heard that snap. That was the pipe snapping onto that adapter. Now, I'm just going to wiggle this guy in place like that. And that's it. All right. That's essentially how that goes together. Pretty easy. That one's down. I'm gonna put our T down there. Nice easy install. And then it all gets backfilled. And you'll never see it on the bottom. Just that piece of pipe sticking out. Nice clean look. This is a piece of pipe coming over from our downspout now into our main trench. Our shower drain is up this way and our drywall is behind the camera. So we're gonna cut this T into place here. Main thing you want to make sure you do here is make sure you don't cut this pipe too short. All right, this is like an accordion. You can push it back a little bit and push it into this. Just remember, when you're pushing this flat, the corrugated pipe into this, it's got to go to the back of this bell here on the fitting. So you want to measure through this. Just the hacksaw. Cuts right through this stuff pretty easily. A little more. snaps right on and you're done goes right into place you can see that we'll just dig this out a little bit more and we'll be able to slip this pipe right underneath All right, guys so where the shower is going to be located here now we got our drain basin we got our pipe in the trench running down to that T we just installed and the pipe just slips right into the drain basin like that and what you could do if you want is you could pop some screws into this just to hold it in place but a lot of times, as soon as you backfill this, it'll hold everything together. I'm gonna to pop a screw in there just to hold it while we're doing all of our work. All right, so this is completely temporary. There is, there is no need to do this. It'll just hold this thing in place so it doesn't shift around on us while we're trying to backfill the trench. There's no need for it once everything is filled. The dirt will hold everything where we need it. All right, we're gonna establish final grade for this when the time comes, we're just looking right now to get all the pipes connected to the fittings. All right, so here's where the T is located. So we got to cut this pipe from the, this is from the shower drain into the T. All right, so again, just find the inside of the bell on the T, which is, uh, looks like to be right about here on this rib. And we'll go ahead and cut that. like that. Now one thing you want to try to do is make sure you don't get a lot of dirt into this pipe. And we're going to snap that together and that looks really good. All right, and then the last section here we got to come off the T and run that down the trench and into the drywall. All right so here's our inlet we have to take out to run our pipe into the drywall. Just get yourself a sharp razor blade and basically just cut these tabs out and I don't know if you're supposed to be able to knock this out with the hammer, but I tried and I'm worried I'm going to break the thing. So let's get in there with the razor blade and it comes right out. Yeah, and it just comes out like that. Let's go ahead and pop this guy back in here. Okay. All right, so that looks looking good. Yeah. Got it. That looks 
looks good. All right, guys, so down here at the bottom of the trench, we have to put the pipe onto this last sprinkle pipe like that. And then, as far as slipping it into the drywall opening, I told you earlier, they sell a fitting for this so you can snap this in, but it's hard to find. Lowe's doesn't carry it, and uh, you don't need it. What you could do is just take a knife and just slice the top of the, the pipe, like you see here. And what that allows you to do is kind of fold it in on itself. And then, you can just push it right through the opening, put the drywall in, and <laughs> this thing popped apart again. But anyway, you get the idea. I'll snap that back together, but that pipe just sticks into the side of the drywall opening like that. And you're done. All right, so here's an overview of the whole thing. So, all right, T. This runs up to our shower drain and obviously from this section of the tee back over to our downspout adapter that we put in so all good to go ready for some backfill all right, and let's start putting our sand around the outside of this thing filling it in see why you have to leave some dirt in place when you're working because you gotta fill the whole outside of this thing back in, obviously, when you're done installing it. So, a good thing to check now, too, is to make sure that this thing is level on the ground before you start going too crazy backfilling it. I should have done that earlier. And uh, luckily for me, this thing is almost perfect, actually. Down there. But yeah, we're dead on. I mean, not super critical, but if, <laughs> if you're at this point and you did all this work, why not do it right? Uh, so that's it. I think I'm going to cut the camera off right now. I'm just going to backfill this whole trench. No real need to show that on camera. A little tip around this you got to pack the sand in or dirt, whatever you put in around the outside of this thing, real good. Um, it's hard to, to push it down in here. You can use the end of your shovel if you want and kind of pack it in as you go. Or another good trick is take a garden hose and turn it on and the water will, will wash everything down in there real good and pack it down nice and good, tight. You don't want this thing to be loose in the ground because if it shifts around, remember these things are going to unlock and open up. And uh, we do not want that happening. We want this thing to stay nice and tight and locked in place. So a real, real important step here that I left out, before you start backfilling around this thing, put the lid on. Because as you're putting the sand or dirt around the outside of this thing, it's starting to deform the sides of the wall on the drywall. And then it gets really difficult to put this lid on. You have to start prying on the side of it uh, with the shovel and pushing down to try to get the... There's a, there's a rim underneath the lid that locks into the sides. So definitely want to put this thing on before you start going too crazy backfilling the sides of this thing because it could be real difficult to get into place uh, if you do it last so I caught that before it was too late and I was able to get it back on there so just keep that in mind so last part of hooking this thing up here we have to finish the inlet into the top of the drywall now like I said this isn't hundred percent necessary you don't need to punch this thing open if you don't need a surface drain uh, I did it just for the sake of uh, being able to locate this thing easier in the future for service and uh, it also doesn't hurt to add a drain up on the lawn here for other things if you ever need it to drain something into it. Maybe the pool cover or something like that. So, so the way you establish the height of the drain here, get yourself a piece of wood that can span across your hole here and lay it down on the finished grade on both sides. And that'll establish where that finished grade is here in the middle. And then just get a measurement. Um, this pipe goes down into the inside of this lid to the lip. So we got to measure up from that to the bottom of this board, and uh, looks like uh, a little like a hair under three and a half inches. So what I'm going to do, a little spider walking across the board there, but uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to actually cut the pipe at three and a quarter inches. Uh, we don't want the drain to stick out above the finished grade, above the grass. Obviously, we want to be able to run the mower over the top of it. And it's always good to have your drain recessed a little bit below ground level to 
eight inch surface water draining into it. So we're going to cut that pipe at three and a quarter. Yep. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and cut that pipe at three and a quarter and get that installed. <laughs> so I think I mentioned earlier it's been a long time since I installed one of these things. It turns out that SDR pipe doesn't fit right in the top of this lid. I thought it did. So what this must take is schedule 40 pipe, which is a little bit thicker than SDR 35 pipe. But the nice thing about this is an SDR coupler that usually couples two pieces of pipe together has the has the same outside diameter as a piece of schedule 40 pipe so coupler actually fits perfect up in the top of this and then one of these strainer grates fits perfect in the top of that so you can either like I said use a SDR coupler or a piece of schedule 40 4 inch PVC pipe for the top and uh, that's really it see that fits in there real nice gives it a nice finished look when it's done and uh, like I said it gives you a uh, demarcation point for exactly where this thing's located. What do you think? Does it work? Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's got a hose in the drain up there giving this thing a test. And that water is pouring in here pretty good, so I think you did a good job, right? Yeah. Where's the water going? Uh, down the drain. Yep. It works, right? Yeah. All right, you did a good job. Yeah. All right, guys, got everything backfilled now. Put the grass back. Everything's looking really, really good. I'm going to call this one a wrap. Um, I'm going to design and build the shower pan on the next video of this series and just keep this one as is strictly drainage like I stated earlier you could use a lot of the things I showed you in today's video for multiple applications other than a shower and uh, like I said let's keep it to the point drywall installed piping installed everything's looking really good I showed you earlier I put the hose in the shower drain here we have nice flow down to the drywall off camera I also put the hose in the downspout pipe over here and that also flows out really well too so successful job good day's work started it this morning like around 10 30 right now it's a little after four so you know a bunch of starts and stops throughout the day uh, with the kids but you know good workout not all that difficult uh, have a good breakfast before you come out here and start doing this work it's just a lot of digging labor intensive but like I said it's not overly difficult you could definitely do this uh, yourself and save yourself a lot of money and hiring a pro. All right, guys. Well, if you liked the video, give the like button a tap. Any questions or comments, put them down below. Again, check the links in the description below for all the products they use today. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.